morning everyone, my name is Rachel and I am bringing to you a devotional to encourage you and this one is for the kids. So grab a pen, grab a paper, you can have some fun with me. Today is backwards day, so you might notice that I'm wearing my hoodie on backwards and I got my hat on backwards and I can't wait to see the pictures of how you are celebrating backwards day. You know what? I was so excited for this backwards day devotional that I even made a little sign for you. Let me just get it here. I made a sign for you this morning that says, welcome to backwards day, but kind of looks a little backwards on the screen, doesn't it? You know what? I think I better do a little bit of rejigging and make this sign read properly. There we go. Welcome to Backwards Day. You know what? When you read this on the screen, it's going to say it the right way because it's turning all of my letters around. But when I look at it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And do you know what? I'm going to tell you a story today that doesn't maybe make a lot of sense when we look at it, but when we dig a little deeper, it will make a lot of sense. I want you to try this at home today. Go ahead and write your name on a piece of paper and then try using the selfie mode on your camera or on your video to see what the words look like. And then maybe you even want to try writing it backwards in the video. That's how I had to do it because it was a little bit tricky to write all my words backwards. Because it's not just the words you've got to use backwards, it's the letters too. Here's my backwards story for you today. And you know what, I'm gonna need your help. I need you to help me say, that's backwards whenever I tell you something that seems a little funny. So this story is about a backwards king and it goes like this. This backwards king lived a long, long time ago. So a long time ago, there was a king and he wasn't an ordinary king. He wasn't born in a palace. Actually, everything about him was a little backward from the day he was born. Even before he was born, things looked a little backwards. You could tell that there was something different about this king. Most kings aren't born in a palace, but this is where I need your help. This king was born in a stable. That's backwards. I helped you out a little bit, but I need you to say it too next time. All right, so when I point it to you, that's your part. You're gonna say? That's backwards. Awesome. Here we go. It wasn't a very big beginning for this king. In fact, very few people even knew that he was born or that he was even a king. That's backwards. You know what? How would a king be born and nobody know about it? Most kings are born and everybody makes a very big deal about their birth. But this king was born in a stable. That's backwards. Good job, now you're catching on. For all of you adults that are watching, maybe just have a little more coffee and that will help you out. So as this infant king, this baby king grew into a man, he continued to be so different from other kings. Most kings spent all their time building up their riches, their silver, their gold, but this king owned nothing at all. Are you ready? That's backwards. There you go. Most kings surrounded themselves with servants and people that would help them to do every little thing. This king was so different that this king chose to serve others and had no servants at all. That's backwards. As time went on, people became very unhappy with their king because he didn't act the way a king should act. Instead of riding into town on, you know, a royal parade and a beautiful white horse, he rode into town on a donkey. That's backwards. So was that a way for a king to act? I don't think so. And people started to choose to become his friends. But you wouldn't believe who his friends were. 
His friends were smelly fishermen and people that could be seen eating with the poor. And you know what? A lot of people didn't even like to hang out with these friends. And that is who this backwards king chose. That's backwards. So crazy. But they made a plan to have this backwards king arrested because they did not think he was fit to be a king. In fact, they couldn't believe that this backwards king was actually a king. And their plan worked. They made a plan to arrest this king and throw him in front of the people and be mean to him and poke fun at him and whip him and hurt him. And instead of everyone saying, all hail the king, they were shouting, crucify him, kill the king. He's not our king. I need you to help me say this together. You ready? That's backwards. So crazy. This king wasn't being recognized as a king and he was being sent to die. They nailed him to a cross and they poked him with sharp sticks and spears and they made a crown of thorns for him to wear. That's backwards. And not only did this king have a crown of thorns put on his head, they even took his body down once his body died and they put it in a borrowed tomb and lay him there. That's backwards. You might think that that's the end of the story, but it's not. The story keeps on going and this backwards king was different. Remember I told you he was special from the beginning? This backwards king rose from the dead three days later, and he is now the forever king. He's the king for anyone who chooses to follow him and for him to be their king. Well, there's still people that do not think that this is the real king, but those who know him don't call him backwards king. They call him Jesus. And I wanted to know, maybe, maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe Jesus isn't king in your life. And I wanted to take an opportunity that you could invite Jesus to be king of your life. You know what? Let's have a moment right now. How about you bow your heads with me? Dear God, I thank you for Jesus, that you sent your son to die on the cross for us and that he was a backwards king. God, I thank you that you died and you rose again to save us from our sin, that you are the one true king that can be king of our lives. And we choose today to put our hope and our trust and our faith in you, that you would be king of our lives. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer with me for the very first time, I want you to connect with us. But you know what? I have something else here, because some of you maybe have prayed that prayer a long time ago. So I wanted to show you this really fun pillow I have. Maybe you have a pillow like this at home, or maybe you've seen it before. This pillow has some sequins on it. And on this sequin pillow, it can be two different colors. Have you ever heard the statement being rubbed the wrong way? Maybe while you're at home doing homeschooling with your parents, you're feeling rubbed the wrong way. Do you know what that means? It means feeling annoyed angry, frustrated, irritated. Maybe as a parent, you've been feeling that you've been getting rubbed the wrong way. I know there's lots of things that annoy lots of us at all sorts of different times. But do you know what? Because today is Backwards Day, I wanted to tell you something special that this Backwards King told us. This Backwards King told us how to live a backwards life. Not a life like everyone else lives, but a life that looks different. A life that when you're rubbed the wrong way, like this pillow, that you still keep shining Christ's love from inside. You see, this pillow is pretty cool because when I rub it one way, it's shiny and purple. And when I rub it the other way, it's silver. But you know the cool thing about this is it still shines. And that's what Jesus does for us on the inside. That when we are rubbed the wrong way and we're feeling annoyed and grumpy and irritated, 
Jesus, because he's the king of backwards, he wants to help us live backwards lives. Lives that even if we're rubbed the wrong way, we don't get frustrated and angry and put each other down. You know what? I want to turn to the Bible and look at a verse that shows this even further. If you're reading along with me, I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 30, uh, no, not 30. <laughs> Here it is. In verse 38, you have heard the law that says, the punishment must match the injury. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. You want to get even with somebody who does wrong to you. But I say, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. If you are sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give them your coat too. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it for two miles. Give to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. You have heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. Whoa. Matthew 5, 38 all the way down to 45, has so many things that we can learn. That when we're rubbed the wrong way, and we're feeling like someone's been mean to us and they've done us wrong, that we're not supposed to revenge them and try to pay back wrong for wrong. And if someone is annoying you, then you're going to be annoying to them. Jesus, the backwards king, tells us to live differently than the world tells us to not repay evil for evil, but to repay evil with good. And that when you are rubbed the wrong way, that to act like true children of God, that we need to love our enemies and we need to show them that we have Jesus inside of us. Now you might be thinking, you know what, this is really, really hard for me to live out every single morning. That when I'm rubbed the wrong way, sometimes shiny silver doesn't come out of me. And you know what, I'm speaking to everybody, even myself. Sometimes when I'm rubbed the wrong way, I do not show the love of Christ. But Jesus, when he left this world, and he went to prepare a place for us to live forever, he said he was sending some Thing to help us and that something is the Holy Spirit and we have the Holy Spirit that can help us shine bright for Jesus so that when somebody does us wrong when we feel mocked when we feel annoyed when we feel irritated when we feel grumpy like we have no patience left the Holy Spirit will be with you. The Holy Spirit will be there to give you power and comfort and to help you have more patience and more self-control and more gentleness and more kindness than you ever thought you could ever have. And do you know where that comes from? That comes from the Holy Spirit being inside of you. So step number one, you have to ask Jesus to come into your heart to forgive you from your sins and step number two, you need to pray that the Holy Spirit would help you each and every day so that when you're rubbed the wrong way, you can shine the light of Christ out to everyone, even if you're, they're your enemies. I want to pray with you this morning, and I want to thank everyone for watching. This has been so fun to share a little message with you uh, on Backwards Day. And I am going to pray for any prayer requests that I've seen in those comments. I've seen a few people pop in. So glad to have you watching. And I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit would fill your homes and fill your hearts so that when you're faced with moments of true anxiety, with worry, with anger, that you will have the Holy Spirit inside of you and you will be able to be more loving and more patient and more... Um, self-sacrificing and being able to serve those around you than you ever thought possible. 
I can't read your backwards writing that quickly. I will have to brush up on my backwards reading and writing skills. So fun. Here we go, let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you that you sent your son Jesus to be the king that challenged our thinking, that challenged the way the world works, that you, King Jesus, can reign in our hearts and our lives even now. Lord, I pray for every person who is watching this and who will watch this, that they would know that you are a powerful king and that you are the one true king of this world and our lives. God, that you will reign forever and ever. Lord, help us to live our lives in a backwards way, that we would look to the end of our lives and what we want to, uh, where we want to end up, that we want to be with you in heaven at the end. And so we will live today with heaven in mind. God, I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to each person, to every home, to every heart, that you would give us more of your spirit, God, that we would be able to act in ways that are not natural for us, but they are natural for you. Holy Spirit, I pray you would help me, that I would be more loving and more kind, that I would show mercy and gentleness, that I would serve those around me than, rather than expect them to serve me. I pray for everyone watching, and we praise you, Lord, for being the one true King, and we put our trust in you. Amen. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you have a fabulous Wednesday and a backwards day to boot. I think backwards day is called, hmm, straw cab. Yeah, straw cab, wait, straw cab, yeah, straw cab, yeah. Have a great backwards day everyone. I can't wait to see your pictures.